The grasslands of Africa teem with wildlife of all kinds, shapes and sizes. Quite often, where zebras, giraffes and antelope roam, there you'll find the ostrich. It's the largest bird on earth. Its wings are just a sad memory of what they must have been millions of years ago, and quite useless to fly with. To compensate, the ostrich has developed long, powerful legs, and he really uses them to move in all directions. A romantic enough scene, but it's not what you'd call a love match. He's already got three wives at home, but none of them mind the new girl too much. For them, it's the more the merrier. Still, they give her the once over. Can she cook? Can she sew? Can she dance? Dance? Well, ostriches do seem to spend a good deal of time looking as if they're dancing. What do they think they're playing at? I'll give them dance. <coughs> Of that. Yes, dear. Coming, dear. Right away, dear. Ah, I should think so, too. There's work to do. Next. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sorry, dear. Hmm. She was my first, you know. Now, Clara. Women. Ah, well. They're all good girls, really. <clears throat> you wanted me? Mustn't be too hard on her. She's new. A lively little hen. Good, good. Excellent, excellent. What, what, what? Again? My, what a clever girl. Oh. Mm. Oh. Can I pick him? In the wild, each female will lay about ten eggs. Each egg weighs about three pounds. In fact, the male ostrich does most of the sitting, being relieved by the hen who takes turns mainly during the daytime. Incubation lasts between six and seven weeks. <coughs> to avoid getting indigestion, Ostriches have to swallow hard objects, like small bricks and stones. Otherwise, they're strict vegetarians. Seeds and grass make up the bulk of their diet. As with the young of all species, growing up is part instinct and part imitation. It also consists in part of curiosity. And curiosity, as everyone knows, not only killed the cat, 
it can be extremely dangerous to ostrich chicks. But never fear, Mum's here. <laughs> but she doesn't always stand and fight. And she always keeps a few tricks up her feathers. First, she tries hiding. If that doesn't work, she relies on the chick's considerable talent for camouflage. See how they merge into the undergrowth. Then she pretends to be injured or sick. And all the time, she's moving further and further away from the chick. When she's far enough away, he isn't pretending. He really does feel ill. And so each species survives in its own way with its own special weapons. For the ostrich, their powerful legs an ability to hide, and a talent for acting. It's worked for millions of years. With luck, it'll work for millions more. on the grassland of Africa. For the nocturnal animals, it's time to get out of the sun, out of reach of enemies. For the others, it's rising time. Hmm? And if one's up, everyone's going to be up. Among this group are the baboons. They sleep by night, feed, hunt, and play by day. They have long tails and well-developed manes. Their large muzzles have earned them the nickname of dog monkey. They travel in a close-knit family group. The largest and strongest male is usually head of the group. His bark is everyone's command. Everybody joins in. On open ground, the smaller females keep in the center with their young. On the outside, the males take up protective positions. It would take a very brave or a very desperate animal to attack a baboon troop in close formation. Being chief of the tribe means responsibilities and advantages, like his mate's breakfast, should he feel like it. Baboons feed on fruit, small eggs, insects and shrubs. They have an acute sense of smell. They are alert, agile, intelligent animals with strong teeth and claws. Unique among wildlife, members of the monkey family make use of artificial tools in their search for food. They have an almost man-like ingenuity. Who knows? Perhaps even a man-like reaction to problems. Ah, uh, come out. I'll get you. There you are. Ah. The chief male has a motto. What's yours is mine. What's mine is also mine. The position of the chiefs is always being challenged.
Between meals and play, baboons rest, gossip, and show their affection by searching for fleas among the thick greyish-brown fur. It's a constant problem. A bit drastic. It's called flea bashing. Miss me. And there's plenty more where that came from. The chief may be challenged at any time, but occasionally the young male may try a subtle approach. Ah, 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 ah. Oh. He doesn't want to be a dentist, and he isn't measuring the chief's tooth for a jacket. Oh, I see. The baboon's greatest enemy is the leopard. That's why it's so dangerous to stray from the group. The, le the females and the young climb to safety. Will he get away? The chief must stand and fight, alone if necessary, to the death. Battling Big Bill, the baboon with the beautiful bulging biceps. When the sun goes down, it's time again to leave and find cover for the night. Within the group, there's violence, aggression, and danger. But there's also fun, and affection, and unity. And a wild and natural purpose that tells the story of a lifestyle going back to the beginning of time. It has a large, gaping mouth, a jaw crammed full of long, pointed teeth, and a powerful, treacherous tail. It's ugly in face and ugly in nature. Of course, it's the crocodile. Probably one of the most unloved creatures in the animal kingdom. It's a reptile, one of the largest. Fully grown, it can reach a length of 30 feet. Of course, when we say unloved, we don't mean by its own kind. For the protection of her young, the female crocodile shows a care and concern that can only be called motherly. Her eggs, and there might be 50 or 60 of them, are laid in a hole dug out of the sand. Exacting work, don't you think? The marabou takes a lively interest. Baby crocodiles are a favourite dish. And who is this hidden stranger keeping such a close watch? The hole is filled in and gently patted down. 
Until the eggs hatch and the babies are safely in the water, the mother will always be close by. Feeding is never neglected. And if the young duck is foolish enough to take a plunge, he must take the painful consequences. unexpected relationship. The crocodile shares one with this little bird. It acts as a kind of traveling dentist. And did anyone call? You called? Howdy do, friend. Up, 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 open wide. Fine. Big eyes you've got, Grandma. Only this isn't Red Riding Hood. And that's not Grandma. This odd body belongs to the monitor lizard. And if there's one dish this lizard loves above all others, it's crocodile eggs. If all the eggs that were laid were to hatch and live to adulthood, the world would be overrun with crocodiles. But of course it doesn't happen. Perhaps no more than four or five will eventually run the full lifespan. Ah. Of all the animals and birds in the African forest, the monkeys seem to be the most careful. At ease on land and in the trees, they get the best out of both worlds. <laughs> they also live by the principle that a little of what you fancy does you good. So, having eaten and drunk, how about a little music? <laughs> Despite great crushing jaws, crocodiles tend to drown their victims whenever they can. Monkeys are carefree, nimble and irrepressible. They are also ingenious and exceedingly fond of breathing. hasn't been waiting all this time for nothing. <laughs> if the Malibu didn't get them, the sand might. Baby crocodiles sometimes suffocate at birth. So she gives a helping hand. He's too late now. He'll have to wait until next season. The stillness of the lake is deceptive. For just below the surface is a teeming world of life. 
the fascinating life of the animal kingdom. This is a part of the vast grasslands of Africa. It's called the savanna. Here, every day at sunset, two things are guaranteed to happen. First, is that most of the birds and animals will go to sleep. Second, is that the rest will wake up. This is the nocturnal community of whom the hippopotamus is an important and large member. Why some animals adapt to daylight life while others prefer the night has never been satisfactorily explained. With the hippo, it may well be that he's so ashamed of his eating habits that he eats at night so no one can see him. His appetite is gargantuan. 300 pounds of grass each night is an average feed. Only the rising sun puts a stop to his chomping, as with the herd, he heads slowly towards water. Heavy, drowsy, and jaws aching, he occasionally takes a wrong turn. Ever seen a hippo fly? Neither have I. This is the hippo's real environment. Clumsy and ungainly on land, he can propel his great bulk through water at surprising speeds. The Greeks called the hippopotamus the river horse. With 8,000 pounds of solid body, this could almost be called graceful. Boy, does that feel good. <sighs> Harry at the bottom of the lake means fish food. They eat the ticks and flies embedded in his thick hide, and so keep it clean. It's a convenient arrangement. You must admit it's got its funny side. <laughs> Why, it isn't Harry the Hippo, Queen of the Flowers. It's swimming lesson time. What a proud moment when Junior takes his first faltering steps to the water's edge. Look at him. Brave. Fearless. Every inch. A craven coward. <laughs> He'll make the Olympics yet. A bronze medal at least. There's nothing quite so creepy as a crawling crocodile when you're swimming with your mother on the surface of the Nile. He swims up close behind you. His thoughts are mean and vile. But he didn't see your mother. What a silly old reptile. There's nothing funny about the dry season in Africa. Man and beast, everyone and everything suffers. The sun burns relentlessly. And little by little, even the deepest lakes and the largest rivers dry up. With their huge need for water, Animals like the hippo are among the first to die off. The vultures know it. The scavenging hyenas know it. 
But no one knows it better than Harry the Hippo. It's not funny. It's a terrible way to go. Lovely, life-giving rain. And here's a picture of one mighty happy hippo. The lakes fill up, the trees sway, the rivers flow, and animals play. For obvious reasons, the rhinoceros has always been prized by hunters of big game. It's a large, solid animal, and when its enormous head is mounted on a wall, you'd think that making the kill must have been very dangerous. You'd have to go a long way to find a hunter so modest that he would contradict that carefully created impression. And for these tall stories, there's always a wide-eyed, breathless audience. Now you can hear him now. There I was, in the middle of the bush, facing this ferocious beast. I was alone, unprotected. As you can see, it's far from the truth. Rhinoceros is by nature docile, difficult to provoke, and patient. But naturally, there's a limit to everything. drop your gun, you'd better run. He's got quite a point there. Another hunter's motto is, if you can't take it, fake it. It's a well-known fact that the camera never lies. Well, hardly ever. And almost before the picture has been framed and hung on the wall, a suitably exciting story has been concocted to go with it. As I was saying, on his first chart, the beast smashed the cane to smithereens. I had no choice. It was me or it. With my bare hands. Uh, I'd lost my gloves, you see. I grasped the rhino fearlessly around his great neck and strangled him. But I really had no choice. It was an air thing. My word, it was. Because of indiscriminate hunting, the rhinoceros population has sunk dangerously low. Without great vigilance, extinction of the species is certainly possible. One of the biggest dangers the rhino faces is the mistaken belief that its horn has special powers. It's believed that the properties of the horn, powdered and swallowed, will prolong life, give new energy and vigor. Thousands of rhinos have been butchered just for their horns. This slaughter has actually brought about the total extinction of the species in Asia. Of course, it's nonsense, but fortunes are still offered to rhino hunters. Rhino hunting is illegal, 
It carries a heavy fine and imprisonment. But still there are always poachers about who are unable to resist the opportunity of easy money. There are two types of rhino. The white rhinoceros feeds mainly on grass, while the black rhinoceros eats leaves. There's a white rhino in this district, and a fortune for the poacher who succeeds in getting the animal's horn. Rhinos tend to be short-sighted. Perhaps because of that, there's developed one of those unusual and unexpected animal friendships that occur from time to time in the wild. In the case of the rhino, it's the Bufocus bird. The bird perches on the rhino's back, eating ticks and flies. When danger approaches, the bird acts as a warning signal. With its mountain of muscle, bone and hide, the rhino doesn't frighten easily. It never looks for trouble. It's slow to anger and prefers to be friendly rather than aggressive. But still nothing is more calculated to make a white rhino see red than a backfiring gun in his ear. Rhino hunting can be an exceedingly boring business, don't you think? Fortunately, modern developments have helped to cut down much illegal slaughter of the rhino herds. Today, there are few things that can't be realistically copied. Remember the hunter's motto, if you can't take it, fake it. Well, plastic skins and hides are being made that look and feel exactly like the real thing. Animal teeth, and in particular rhino horn, can now be made that is almost indistinguishable from the genuine article. These products help to reduce the value and the demand on the hunter's services and the threat to the rhino herds. In this way, everyone is satisfied. The elderly gentlemen take their plastic horn potions and think it's the real thing, while the real article stays where it belongs, stuck firmly in the middle of the rhino's head. And long may it stay there. The grassland of Africa is filled with wildlife of every conceivable type, color, and shape. This strange shape has an even stranger name. It's called the secretary bird. The things he likes best, reptiles and insects, tend to stay close to the earth. Here's a different shape, a gentle bird. It's the plover. One thing the secretary bird can't resist, the snake. No mistaking this shape. It's called a spitting viper. Can you guess why? The viper's food consists of almost any small animal or bird that he can catch and wrap his mouth around.
Mice are considered a tasty delicacy. The viper has an amazing ability to follow a scent along the ground. Doesn't that mouse know anything? The viper doesn't have to climb the tree. <laughs> and there she blows. The secret weapon of the spitting viper. I don't think I can watch. It's too painful. <laughs> but you have to give it to him. When he went, he went bravely. Ah, well, that's the law of the jungle. A never-ending cycle of death and survival. It's not long before the viper is on the slide again. <laughs> What's he seen? Who's next? It's the family plover. But it won't be an easy fight. Not far away, there's a friend. It's the law of the jungle again. A fight to the death. By the way, why is it called the secretary bird? For the answer, we go back to the early explorers in Africa. The feathers on the back of the bird's head reminded them of the quill pens that the secretaries used to carry behind their ears. Well, that's their story anyway.
where vultures fly. Death is never too far away. Yet they're not as bad as they seem. For along with all the other scavenging birds and animals, they help to keep the deserts and grasslands clean. The death of the old elephant was a sad sight, and yet it's an essential part of the never-ending cycle of nature. A balance that includes not only death, but new life. There's a long life ahead, with a lot to see and a lot to learn. In particular, if he hopes to live to a ripe old age, he must learn to recognize his friends and the others. But lions have to eat too. But it's not that easy. The lion wouldn't dare to attack a fully grown elephant mother, nor father. But little Jumbo is a different matter. And if the wily old lion is very patient, just watch closely. The greatest threats of the elephant herds in Asia and Africa have been the ivory hunters. Hundreds of thousands of elephants have been slaughtered for their ivory tusks. So over the years, elephants have always treated the scent of man with great suspicion. Elephants won't fight if they can possibly avoid it. They work on the principle, when in doubt, move out. <coughs> Moisture is vital to life. And when nature brings drought, everyone and everything suffers because of it. In parts of Africa, the dry season can last for months. The elephant is able to survive serious drought conditions better than most animals. Keeping his back and spine protected from the burning sun is essential. When water isn't available, he makes do with a gentle dust shower. With his height and enormous strength, the elephant can reach and squeeze moisture out of the most unlikely looking leaves and branches. Hmm. Very tasty. <laughs> mm. Highly choice. Mm. The elephant has another almost unique talent. One that a good many other animals and bird species have reason to be thankful for. The elephant can not only smell water located deep beneath the ground, but when he finds it, he has the strength and ingenuity to dig it out. This looks a likely spot, a dried up water hole. Let's see now. Hmm. There must be water down there. I can smell it. Hmm. I thought so. As far as the elephant is concerned, everyone's welcome to share. Dust is all very well, but you can't beat a trunk full of good, clean, fresh desert water. 
The average lifespan of the elephant is about 80 years. From time to time, the forests reveal a sad picture. It will be that of an aging, solitary elephant grubbing about for food in the undergrowth. His strength has begun to fail. His teeth have gone and he's making ready to die. So as not to be a burden on the rest of the herd, he moves away to end his days alone. He lived with pride, he'll die the same way. But he won't be entirely alone. There'll always be the vultures. Perhaps the end will be quiet and peaceful, if he's lucky. But he isn't. He'd forgotten all about his tusks. Can he muster the strength for one last charge? No, he can't. But we won't look. He doesn't have to worry anymore about lions or drought or food or hunters. It's the law of the wild, the cycle of life. 